fact that Australians have fought and died at sea in order to preserve the freedom of our country is a memory only to those who lost husbands, fathers and sons. The growing need for a navy now and into the future is great. A navy powerful enough to meet any threat, any time and with the shortest of warnings. This is an island continent, surrounded by seas. Whilst those seas remain friendly and without threat, we enjoy one of the world's greatest and most beautiful seaboards. Should they become hostile, we are cut off from help, isolated and alone. is on the development of improved maritime capability. It seems to me that there is a strong case for increasing the percentage of the defense outlay. For this reason, the Navy has been limited to relatively slow expansion. In spite of public apathy, the growing need for a navy now and into the future is great. A navy powerful enough to meet any threat, any time, and with the shortest of warnings. This island continent of ours, like all islands, depends upon outside lines of supply for survival. Three quarters of our trade, and therefore our livelihood, relies entirely on the freedom of those sea lanes. By the end of this decade, up to 80% of our energy requirements will come by sea. Cut off this energy flow, even hundreds of miles away from our shores, and Australia will be brought to a standstill. Industry is paralyzed without a steady supply of coal, iron ore and other raw materials, nearly two-thirds of which is carried by sea sink the interstate bulk carriers and industry stops. Blockade our trade routes, sever our supply lines, and Australia can be quickly brought to its knees. Its defense forces crippled. Australia's need for a strengthening navy is greater today than it has ever been. An independent and powerful deterrent, capable of defending those trade routes well outside the limits of shore support. You are about to see what is being done to keep Australia's Navy strong and growing stronger. The constant training, building and exercising needed to keep pace with the international uncertainty of our times.
Max, uh, 090, 120 miles. Four aircraft, speed fast, closing. Roger, let me have an exact speed as soon as you can. Not 284 sorry, litre, yeah. head to 080 hey, uh, for a raid closing us from the east, uh, approximately 120 miles now. Roger, Melbourne, Delta Force to intercept. Request radar back. Six up, bird of firm, eight zero. Let's get a one to uh, eight zero two four splash now. CCLAP, standby target set up. Bearing that. Green 9. Range that. 10 minutes. Speed between the last two looks. 7 knots. Mean 8 knots over all 9. Right, 4,150 yards. Port 30. Port 30. 34 will answer. Steer, 320. Stand by the bow salvo. Stand by the bow salvo. Foreign stopping. Bring 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 tubes in the standby state. Roger, select number 1 tube. Stand by. Fire. Fire, 1 fire. 2 selected, ready to fire. Seeking leader 1, seeking 2. I have you on radar. Jump at 270, 6,000 yards to investigate data. Over. Seeking lead, Rog. Up front, stand by to jump left onto 270. Roger. Sonar contact 277, 2,540, classified enemy submarine. Roger. Search investigate 230, scale 20, watch 11,000. Kilos, three, up, front, 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 up,
The first weeks of the 1980s have brought about events that have shaken the world into a new awareness, a new realization that the possibility of war is always with us. We must never allow ourselves to forget that this lucky country of ours is an island. If it is to remain free, these oceans that surround us must remain free. We must always keep a sea watch.